Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm just uh, turned on the system now, so it's just beginning to go live. And I see we, from the registrants here, we've 155 people in the room currently, but it's going up steadily as we go. So I'm just going to uh, start a presentation so you have a bit of something to look at. Thanks. Here's Mr. Fian here. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Fian. Hello, everybody. Sorry I'm late. Not at all. I know you were just coming from the Shannon. So I'm just about to start a presentation and our our running order is that uh, Mark Garvin, Dr. Mark Garvin is going to do a quick introduction. I'm going to do a, quite a short presentation and then Minister Rabbit is going to say a few words and then you can hopefully wrap things up for us at the end. Um, all in all, I, I hope we are in and out well well before the 12.45 that we'd, we'd scheduled for. So I'm going to just start screen sharing this and um, hopefully you can see that there. So this is what we're here to talk about today. So uh, the lives of our young people, these are the latest uh, step forward in the Planet Youth Project in the West of Ireland. Uh, I'm not gonna say too much more just yet. I'm just gonna hand you over to Dr. Mark Garvin. He's the a, a senior lecturer in GMIT, but he's also our current independent chairperson for the Planet Youth Mayo Steering Committee and doing a fantastic job for us with that. So I'll hand over to you, Mark. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Emmett. Um, First thing to say is everyone is really welcome and it's great to have such a large turnout and I hope that that shows a good degree of interest in the findings and in the survey itself. Um, I think it's also important when we start just to acknowledge the work that's being done and I do want to, I don't want to single out anybody but I know Emmett and Michal who are here have put in a huge amount of effort in producing this data and information and in fact quite apart from how objectively difficult it is to survey every school in three counties to do so at a time of COVID is quite an achievement, and I think that should be acknowledged. Uh, we have a huge amount of information here, uh, both this survey and the previous one, and processing all of that data is itself an enormous amount of work. So there's, there's, there's a great amount of knowledge being gathered here. One thing to say is it's really important to understand that Planet Youth is a primary intervention tool. And what that means, it's designed to intervene in the lives of people before we have problems, before we have difficulties. So it's not trying to fix problems that are already occurred. It's trying to provide an evidence-based pathway so that the organizations involved in working with young people are informed and have an intelligent and wise way of responding to issues before they become problematic. And that's really a critical point to understand. So I am here as one member of the steering committee in Mayo and on the regional committee as well, which comprises all of the organizations, or at least most of the organizations that work with young people. And for us, Planet Youth gives us the framework within which to respond to issues for young people. Um, again, it'll be up to you, the participants in due course, to go through the findings and to try and make sense of them. Um, it is interesting to see the comparatives between this survey and the previous survey as well. So we get a, we get a, a perspective on what's changing and what are beginning to emerge as trends. Obviously, COVID is a huge intervention point this time and will inevitably skew some of the data. Um, but in general, the picture is, as one would expect, a mix of things that are positive and a mix of things that are negative. I mean, just on the positive side, the close uh, connection between our young people and their families is really striking and really encouraging. I think that's very important, that good communication and good support. And then obviously on the other side, we're seeing a lot of evidence for distress, mental health challenges, and some behavioral issues arising from that. And that's something we have to pay close attention to. And equally with COVID, there's a mixed bag as well in terms of its impact. It has strangely brought families together. That's what the data seems to suggest, a little bit more. But obviously it's also created problems of isolation and loneliness and all the challenges that we're familiar with. So there's no doubt again, in terms of primary intervention, as we hopefully unfold ourselves out of the lockdown and the COVID emergency phase, the recovery phase is going to be quite complex and is going to involve much multidisciplinary activity. So I think this survey today that's been launched will give us lots of signposts on how we might do that. And I think that's really commendable and very, very important. And I really urge organizations to pay close attention to some of the finer points of the data to give themselves some evidence, uh, again, in terms of pathways of response. The one last thing that I always like to stress in these situations is, while this is called Planet Youth, and obviously it's focused on young people, the idea here is not in any way to problematize young people or pathologize young people. 
we're not looking at young people as an object of inquiry. We're just wanting to ensure that we have effective ways of responding to the issues that young people are experiencing. Because the issues that are current for those who are 15 and 16 are going to, if they're not intervened with intelligently, become much bigger and challenging issues in the future. And that's very, very important. My last comment, and then I'll stop, is that it is clear from the survey, this survey and the previous one, that the issue for young people is, is not anything inherent to them. Our young people are no more good or bad than any generation of young people. The issue is they're dealing with a very complex and challenging world. Uh, they're dealing with a multimedia, social media saturated reality where their privacy is hugely infringed upon voluntarily, but within their own social and cultural practices. They're exposed in an incredible way to the gaze of others. They have to negotiate very complex sets of social relationships. Um, alcohol and drugs are a much stronger feature of people's lives. So it's a very difficult world. And if we see them struggling a bit to make sense of it, we have to remember they're only 15 and the world is very difficult for all of us. So if we're seeing issues for young people, we mustn't conclude from that that there's some problem with young people. I think a better conclusion is there's things in our social world that we, other generations, have to address to get right so that we create a much more benign and nurturing environment for our young people. I think that's a big takeaway message from both of the Planet Youth surveys. So with that, I commend the survey to everyone. Again, I congratulate those who put it together. And I do indeed hope that the huge amounts of data in this survey, remember, you're just getting a summary report. There's a vast amount of data. And when you start correlating the data, it gets even more complex. But I hope all of that gives people a really good picture of the story of our young people and then better tools to respond to them. So I welcome the report and I welcome all of you here again. Thanks very much, Emma. Thanks very much, Mark. Thanks very much indeed for a, a great introduction there. Um, so I'll, I'll jump right in, tell you a little bit about what we're at. Okay, so um, yeah, the lives of our young people is kind of the name we put on this uh, latest version of the survey, the first one in October 2018. This latest one was conducted in December 2020. We had 4,480 young people uh, re reported on in the first county reports. And this time around, it's 4478. Two less is a, it's a almost identical number of young people involved. And again, the same 91 schools and centres right across the region. So very, very thorough. Uh, and what we are at, basically, is trying to deliver this um, Icelandic primary prevention model into the west of Ireland, right, where they've, had, they've managed to work wonders up there in terms of substance use prevention and along the way improved the health and well-being of a whole generation of young people in all sorts of ways. So while they got there with the substance use, they've seen other great outcomes around you know, families and f education and physical activity and all sorts of things have improved because they took this approach of uh, preventing problems before they arise. So it's a big project. Um, we're two years into it now. Uh, it's an interagency project. And you can see here uh, on the slide that there's quite a lot of uh, agencies involved. And this isn't all of them by any means. This is just our, our co-funders of the IMOU. That's our agreement with ICSRA at Reykjavik University. So we have our two agencies here at the top that I work for, the task force and the GRETB. Um, we have then our co-funders, Tusla, Sipsi, the HSE, and our county councils, Goa City, Mayo, a county council, Goa County Council. Uh, and without them, we couldn't we couldn't have got this up and underway at all. So big thanks to them, right? Uh, so why are we doing it really? We're we're taking the information, as Mark said, from the young people at 15 and 16 years old, right? But what we're trying to do is apply rapid community-based interventions into the younger population, so that when these kids are coming into school at 12 and 13, and even maybe you could say coming in to our national schools, down to four, five, six years old, those are the kids we're trying to change the social environment the way they're growing up, so that when they get to be the teenagers, uh, the landscapes change quite a bit for them, right? So that's how primary prevention works. You apply interventions for them in these different domains here. This is, this is These are the things that influence their life, parents and family, what they do in their leisure time, their peer group, uh, what goes on for them at school, and then very much what goes on for them in their local community. So that's that's where we focus our efforts. And you'll find um, 
on our website, the framework document, the strategic, strategic document that we've applied to the project, we're, we're very much taking a holistic approach to this, not just about the substance use. For us, we're looking at overall happy, healthy kids, right? So that are achieving their full potential. So by taking this approach, we'll pick up our substance use issue with it, right? But we can, we can improve a lot of other things at the same time. So some of our plans for the year, uh, we have our new county reports. I'm going to talk about those uh, shortly. The school reports, we have a nice new website coming on stream for our schools called Facts. Uh, we have a, a really exciting national schools project which I'm going to touch on briefly. Some videos uh, coming out later on in the year. We'll be doing a lot of new thematic and agency reports for our agencies in the region. Uh, and then we've kind of some funding applications going on. We're hoping to have a look at this idea of a leisure card scheme uh, earnestly later in the year. And then we have kind of a couple of uh, tie-ups with uh, NUIG who are going to be helping us with some secondary analysis, we hope, through a HRB fund. And uh, we actually, uh, it's kind of news that the, the 2018 data set has just arrived into ISTA. That's the Irish Social Sciences Data Archive at UCD. So anybody now for research and teaching purposes can access the 2018 uh, data set. And hopefully the 2020 data set will be up there uh, sometime this summer okay so uh, we've made that available to anybody to use okay so just to come back to a little bit about these projects for the year uh, we're getting very sophisticated now this time around two years on we've learned a bit and we're going to be generating um, some very kind of in-depth reports for each school where they can look at their own student population as compared to the rest of the region so the best kind of comparison we can possibly give them. So for example, if we were looking at a boys' school, we would show them their uh, young population in their school against all the other uh, boys in the region. And that should show them that whether they're going to be high or low for certain things, if things are good, things are bad, things are doing well, why are we doing them so well? Uh, other schools can maybe learn, or if things aren't going so well, maybe things they could address through uh, health and well-being, that kind of stuff. So those reports should be going out next week. And again, pretty sophisticated, actually, and much more thorough than the first reports the schools would have got two years ago. This is actually how they'll be broken down, these new school reports. So they'll get uh, information on the uh, the school experience of the young people, their substance use, their peer group, the stuff going on around bullying, other peer group behavior, leisure time, screen time, well-being indicators. You can see sexual health and behavior we added into the 2020 questionnaire along with a few other things. Uh, we look at some gender differences between the boys and the girls, so hopefully that's uh, informative as well. And then we cross tabulate so we can see, show the schools some of the effects of, let's say, for example, not getting enough sleep or um, kids that weren't happy in school, that kind of thing. We can see other things that are going on. So another big project this year is this new website called The Facts, right? Uh, this is just a mock-up here. It should be ready to go live in a beta version by the end of May. And we're hoping it'll be in use in our schools in the region come September. And as you can see here, these are the sort of categories we'll be putting in. So information on sleep, substance use, screen time, and so on, right? Uh, we have a lot of data there. And we're the idea of this is that the young people in junior cycle, so first year, second year, third year, will get the benefit of seeing you know, precisely what's going on amongst their older peers. Uh, and not just, let's say, the headline data. So we could look at how many kids are reporting being bullied, um, but we can show the effects of that. So the sort of impacts that might have on uh, things like self-esteem or mental health or school engagement, that kind of thing. So really useful information in the classroom, not to replace the curriculum, but to support SPHE and the wellbeing curriculum uh, and we think that schools are going to find that pretty useful. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge the fact that we had a, a number of school SPHE and wellbeing coordinators who gave their help in designing the content of this. And we had a, a young persons group, the Corgi group of fifth years in Portumna Community School, who gave a lot of their ideas and input. So I'd like to thank them and their, their school chaplain, Bridge, Bridge Dunn, for organizing that for us. Another project that's coming up quite shortly that I'm very excited about really is this one. Okay, so. We've put Parent Power as a name on it just for the moment, a national schools project in partnership with Tusla, the Parent Support Champions Project in Tusla. And what we're looking at is four pilot sites across the region. You can see them there, Galway City, Ballinatslo, uh, Roscommon Down and Eris up in Mayo, where what we're looking is is bringing uh, clusters of schools together, right? And working with the what will be the incoming first class parents. So the senior infant parents will be meeting with them before they're gone. So next month, May, the plan is to get them together in the evening time and do a consultation with them around uh, what they would like to, to work on together. So the idea, what we're really looking at here is parent networks, classroom-based contracts, which have been very successful in other places that have tried this. We haven't really had a good go at this yet in Ireland. So I think we're, you know, I'm really hopeful that we can do something quite exciting in that space. Now, we won't 
dictate what parents want to do because um, that's for them to come up with. But it it will likely be along the sort of lines of the guidelines for parents booklet we did with all the first year parents and the fridge magnet that they got around bedtimes and things like that. So the idea being really, if parents in a class or within a wider community of schools can agree on things like it could be bedtimes, screen use, that kind of thing. Um, it can be birthday parties or communions or what age kids get phones at. Uh, all of that would really help in kind of uh, cutting back on some of these issues that we see as the kids get older. So parents working together can achieve a lot. So that's the theory. And we're very hopeful that uh, that's going to be a really exciting project. We're looking forward to it anyway. So um, moving on, we have the new 2020 reports coming out. So that's the, the three covers there that you're looking at. They're very comprehensive. I have to say, uh, two years ago, the reports that we produced were 28 pages long. and they had, I think I counted them, there was 49 individual charts or data charts in those first reports. That report's now 52 pages. So we've, we've included quite a lot more information. Uh, there's 75 more detailed charts than we would have put in the first one. Uh, this will give you a bit of an idea of the content. So what you're looking at here is one of the kind of infographics or key finding infographics that are in the document. And here we have the, the contents page. And we can see this is sort of a breakdown of sections here. So we've a COVID-19 section. We we knew uh, when we were planning the survey for 2020 that we had the opportunity to alter the questionnaire a little bit to to change it from two years ago. So we dropped a few things and included a few more things. And we, COVID-19 was one of those drug-related intimidation, uh, racism, access to hobbies and sports, barriers to access and hobbies and sports. That kind of stuff was we we looked at that extra information. Not all in the report, but. Um, COVID-19 certainly is. We have the trends section, substance use, family time, screen time. We can see here our well-being indicators, leisure time, school experience, and then sexual health and behavior. We included a section on that, uh, which would be useful to for a couple of, well, all sorts of reasons really, but it was kind of asked for by a couple of agencies in the region. Could we have a bit of a look at that? So uh, we accommodated uh, that into the 2020 Planet Youth Questionnaire. Right. So I'm just going to touch a little bit on some of the data, not too much, right? Just a little bit. But we could see here, you know, in that first section, we have a few slides around COVID-19. And we were asking young people, you know, were things are better, a bit better? Were they worse? Were they a bit worse, a lot worse? Right. And th th this is just a little bit of an overview that they gave. So we could see there uh, asked, you know, how was COVID-19 lockdown and restrictions affected these areas of your life? Now, they were asked this in December. And by then, They'd already they'd been out of school since March. Um, they hadn't been back in. They got back in September, late August, September, and had been in under restrictions. So we had the mask wearing. They were in and they were probably messing around with buses up earlier for buses a bit maybe. Uh, and even at the time the survey was done, their their hobbies and sports were kind of on hold. So school was kind of, a, you know, they're getting through a lot of schoolwork, but it wasn't a whole lot of fun for them because they didn't get to see their friends and class pods and that kind of thing. So... Um, that's a little bit about COVID-19. You can see there, mental health, the kids are saying massively, massively disimproved, physical health down, peer relationships down, family relationships. In that section, that's the only one that's showing any kind of a, a spin on that. It's going the other way, a little bit better, they would say. Okay, substance use, really holding. Do you know, uh, we could see tried alcohol, drunk in their lifetime, cannabis in lifetime, all very similar down a tiny bit which is good to see things going down a tiny bit in that space is we're delighted to see that but uh drunk in the last month was the was the one that was down which wasn't that surprising to us given the restrictions uh, you know, less young people out and about um good to see but um we're still holding up way way too high in our substance use figures we can see here mental health the kids who are rating their mental health is bad very bad and the boys here uh are less inclined to say that but there there's a significant change you can see a 50 percent change in the two years and with the girls then um they're they're more inclined to say that the mental health is poor is bad or very bad and you can see again then significant change in the two years which we put to covid okay this shows things that are a little bit more tangible there's a lot of stuff in the questionnaire things like self-esteem uh self-image mental health well other well-being indicators positive thoughts feelings that kind of stuff but Real tangible physical changes like sleeping problems we see here, appetite changes, you know, so so very something very significant going on because of COVID. Sleep is dramatically impacted as well. We already knew they weren't getting nearly enough sleep two years ago, um, but that's changed dramatically for the worse as well. So they're in the middle. Those are the kids in the, that middle section that are sleep deprived and the ones in the right six hours or less are, are kind of very sleep deprived. 
But uh, if we you look at the correlations within the report, you can see how damaging that is in all sorts of ways. So that's a concern and something we'll be looking to do a bit of work on. Right. So I'm not going to talk a huge amount of uh, more about the data. That's all in the reports. And what you can do is you can you can access those. Right. That's the Planet Youth website. They're all available there and for download in the survey results section. So I'd say just feel free to fire away. They're there today, all three uh, account reports and three of the infographics, which I'm showing you here now. So you can see, you know, the, we, we produce these poster infographics, uh, kind of a very easy, digestible information. They're, they're only kind of a glimpse into what's in the report, but they're helpful nevertheless. Uh, the other thing I'd just say is that we, we are going to do a bit more of a presentation on what's there in the data. Uh, that's going to be uh, this Thursday. At twelve thirty, you can register that and come along. We'll do a bit of a Q and A there, so people have questions. That's the time to bring them. And what we can see there is, uh, it's probably the best place to look is on the news section of the Planet Youth website, or you can find it through the WRDATF, the Drug Task Force website as well. Okay, I'll just kind of move on to towards maybe towards the end of the of the county reports. So as we can see, we these sections sort of wrap it up. So we have a conclusion. Uh, we have key messages. We make our recommendations this time around within the four domains of intervention. So parents and family, the peer group, leisure time, and school. And we have kind of helpful, very achievable. We kind of stripped everything right back. These are kind of relatively doable. Some of them are happening anyway. Uh, some of them can be done without too much uh, effort, we think. So uh, I'd... I'd suggest people maybe have a quick look through and see what the key messages and recommendations are. I want to just touch on the conclusion a little bit because we kind of uh, made that largely speaking under the under the domains of intervention as well. But one of the things I kind of wanted to maybe point out here within the end or towards the end of the conclusion is, you know, the, we can see, you know, the issue with COVID. Um, things weren't altogether rosy two years ago. We had a lot of work to do, but now with COVID, um, I think it's more imperative that we we do respond to this younger generation and to the damage we're seeing. Uh, because just because we're we're doing this survey at 15 and 16, uh, I'd say the same issues uh, go right the way back, you know, down to all our all our young people, really. So um, there, it's kind of black and white or blue and white, I suppose. Never before has a need to invest in the well-being of our young people be more apparent or indeed more important. And we, you know absolutely feel planet youth uh, gives us the platform you know to to do that work so i'm not going to say too much more uh i have a couple of thank yous i, I would quite like to do um if that's okay and, and the first one really would be for the schools the principals and our, our in-school coordinators for helping make the survey happen this year because we absolutely couldn't have done it without them um and we were hugely encouraged by how how res helpful they were and responsive they were and uh getting this done it was quite a it was quite an undertaking but uh, you know we were we were thrilled that we managed to get it done because it's going to be so helpful uh, i'd also like to thank the three steering committees our, our, our kind of county steering committees for helping bring the whole project this far and uh, helping with the content of these new reports um and to pat conway as our coordinator of the planet youth steering committee up in mayo uh gary kine here in the drug task force uh, offices are one of our uh, our main administrator, I suppose you could say, and I'd like to thank him for his help with the distribution, the packing, all the work that went into getting the survey out the door here. Um, and we had a great uh, helper here from uh, on work experience from TY in Calisanctis College, Liam Johnson. So just to thank you to him. Uh, Rethink Ireland are kindly awarded us a grant late last year, which we're using to pay for the the new website, the FACS website, this SPHE and wellbeing website. Uh, so that's really, really been fantastic that, to have that kind of bit of income to play with. Uh, the other person I suppose I really should point out is Michal Durkin, the, the task force coordinator has been uh, for all his support and help throughout really, but very helpful when we were writing the ports recently, um, but for believing in the project, generally speaking, and for funding it to date. Um, the IMOU, our, our agencies in the region are very supportive with the, what it takes to cover that, but everything else really, we have to find the money to pay for. And uh, the task force operational budget is, you know, we do eat into it with, for, for, for Planet Youth. So I'd like to thank Michal for, for just for allowing us to do that, making it happen, we couldn't happen really without without that. So I'm I'm bound to be missing quite a lot of people, but I'm gonna I'm gonna really leave it at that. So if people want to um, get in touch with us, find out a bit more about what's going on at any time, uh, possibly the easiest ways through the Planet Youth website, the info at Planet Youth, the contacts are there. Uh, we put our news up there, the videos. 
we'll probably put a recording of this uh, webinar up there later in the day for anybody who didn't make it along. And that's kind of it for me. I'm going to hand you over to, to Anne, and I hopefully, I know your broadband hasn't been great today, Anne, or your internet, but uh, if it's working out, you might have a few words for us, so I'll shut up with that. And thank you, everyone. Um, thanks, can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Um, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you so much, Emmett and Dr. Canavan there for, for your presentation. Emmett's right, my broadband isn't great, so you're going to get very little of me, which is brilliant. I'll cut straight to the chase. I suppose I'm a complete advocate on Planet Youth, and I have been for a long number of years. As a mum of children who has completed the questionnaires down through the years, I wholeheartedly believe in the project of Planet Youth, and I'm delighted to see the reports that were sent to me there um, by, the, by the team in the last number of days. Incredibly comprehensive and an awful lot of um, learning to be taken from it. And I think the, the, the reports are coming at a very timely pace. Uh, as the doctor said earlier on, as we head into the recovery, we need to take the lessons from it and we need to take the learning from it and we need to, to support our youth. And I know that my, my colleague there, Minister Feehan, will address you in a few moments. Uh, and to be honest with you, the whole well-being piece and reconnecting young people. And if we take our learning, like the learning that I couldn't get over it was really it was about the loneliness, the isolation, the turn to screen time. Uh, uh, and But there was positives in it about family engagement. Um, I wholeheartedly want to commend the whole team on the, the work that they have taken over the three counties, Galway, Mayo and Roscommon, a complete CHO, to gather this, to gather this during very challenging times. And I have to thank the schools and the young people and their families for engaging and giving us the information, because I think this information, knowledge and is is key and powerful in this. Um, so, I heard, I no doubt that Emmett there was talking about the leisure card and the investment into it and the great research that we have taken uh, um, from Iceland. So, look, at, as I say, I'm completely 100% supportive behind this project. I'm very supportive behind my colleague, Minister Feehan, and it's great to work with him on this. Uh, and I know how passionate he's on it. So, without saying any more there, I'm going to hand it over to, to Minister Feehan and thanks to everybody concerned. Thanks, Anne. Welcome, Minister Fian. Thanks for joining us. I know you're uh, a busy morning. Uh, thank you, everybody, and uh, thank you, Minister Abbott, and good, good, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to close this very welcome event. Uh, earlier this year, myself and Minister Abbott had the pleasure of taking part in an online meeting with Emmett and Michal from the Western Region Drug and Alcohol Task Force, and we were both impressed with the work being carried out by the Planet Youth Project. So it's a particular pleasure to be here again today uh, to help to launch these new reports. And it's a very valuable addition to our sources of data on the well-being of young people. Uh, data gathering and research is a vital part of our uh, work in Healthy Ireland and it helps ensure that our policies have a firm foundation. Uh, um, these reports are a very welcome addition to the data we have from such studies as the health behaviour in school Age, stud, age children's study and the European School Survey on alcohol and drugs. Additionally, it is very welcome that these latest surveys take the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic into account and the effects of the pandemic on our youth and the sacrifices they've had to make have been a great area of concern to us all. So it's useful to have this additional information. And even just talking, talking to my driver on the way up, you know, we, we, we more have said that, that the challenges that our young people have faced and the way they've uh, faced up to the challenges. I, I, I'm not sure if it was 20 or 30 years time when I was that young, would I have been is, 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 is forthright. And I just want to pay tribute to, and I believe that the health and well-being of our children is a key indi in indicator of the health of our nation. And like many such reports recently, the findings we are launching here today are a mix of both positive and not so positive news. And I am very encouraged to see that the majority of the children surveyed have good relationships with their parents and carers and report being happy and safe in their homes and in communities. I'm also happy to see the number of people reporting their physical health as good or very good. And we're delighted to see the levels of physical uh, and uh, uh, participation in physical activity. They are encouraging and 
this is something which both Healthy Ireland and indeed the sport leadership groups have prioritised in implementing our national physical activity plan and national sports policy. It is perhaps even more important to have the data and areas concerned, such as we consider how best to manage the challenges facing today's youth. And I'm very concerned about the misuse of drugs and alcohol by all groups across society, but particularly by young people of school going age. To tackle these trends, I believe there are a multifaceted approach such as Planet Youth and can provide the necessary education resources to minimise the risk of substance misuse amongst young people. A number of months ago, I launched the European Schools Project on Alcohol and Other Drugs, otherwise known as SPAD, report. Uh, this report monitors trends in drugs and alcohol, smoking and gambling, and gaming and internet use. And I was particularly struck and saddened by the prevalence of drug use amongst our young population, with almost one in five respondents reportedly having tried cannabis and, and other drugs, and 3% of respondents reporting having tried cocaine. That is why it gave me great pleasure to build upon the early intervention measures already in place by announcing additional funding as part of Budget 2021 for the expansion of the HSC Drugs and Alcohol Helpline. This is a confidential service which has both a free phone helpline and email support service, providing assistance to users, parents, or friends with a concern relating to drug or alcohol use. This increase in funding will help increase the capacity of the helpline, including an extension to its opening hours. Um, resources for par parents are also available on askaboutalcohol.ie website, and these resources are all free of charge online and contain lots of practical tips, advice on how to begin the conversation with your child about alcohol and drugs. I am concerned by the levels of alcohol use among 15 to 16 year olds. No one can read that one in five teenagers agers in Mayo, Galway and Sligo have been drunk in the last month and not be concerned. And the Public Health Alcohol Act was developed to address Ireland's relationship with alcohol. And one of its core objectives is to delay the initiation of alcohol consumption by children. And provisions addressing alcohol advertising has already been introduced. And you will have noticed the separation of alcohol products in our shops in recent months. And we have regulated alcohol price promotions to discourage excessive alcohol consumption and binge drinking. And I'm confident these measures will lead to the lasting improvement in the health and well-being of our young pe people. Through your programme, Planet Youth has a unique opportunity to engage with teenagers on the relationship with alcohol at its, as we say, a defining time in their lives. With regard to smoking, the report from the three counties show that an average of about 6% uh, pupils smoke daily, and we want it to be zero, and we will need Planet Youth's help to get there. And at the national level, we are developing public health, tobacco, nicotine, and healing products bill, and the bill will strengthen the protection of children by prohibiting the sale of tobacco at events and occasions intended for children and further reduce their availability and visibility. The bill will also pro prohibit the bill sale of nicotine inhaling products, including e-cigarettes, to and by persons under 18. Education on smoking and alcohol and target interventions used by the Planet Youth models, in particular at peer group level, can reach teenagers in a way that traditional models might not. And put simply, Planet Youth can save lives and there can be no better outcome for any project or intervention. One of the most important assets we have in the implementation of Healthy Ireland is a network of stakeholders and collaborators we have built. And this network is vital to our work in improving health in our communities. And the Planet Root Youth Project is a great example of this in action. It only remains for me to thank Emmett, Michal and Mark for the, and our colleagues in the Western Region Drug Task and Alcohol Force for their great work. And we wish you every success in further developing Planet Youth which offers great potential to significantly improve the health and well-being of our population in the years to come. Thank you. Thanks very much, Minister Fian. Thanks for the kind words. And that's it, really, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it was very short and sweet, and that's all we wanted it to be, right? And uh, just a quick introduction. As I said before, everything's available up on the website. So if you want to uh, work away, feel free to download the reports and get in touch there. And uh, I think we can wrap it up with that. So thanks for attending.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Minister Abbott, for introducing me to 